All right, guys, welcome back to another video. And today's video, uh, there was a member in one of the Lionel groups on Facebook that was asking about taking apart a 2055 to show how to lube it. So that's what I'm going to do today. Now, this is my 2055. It's the first Lionel that I ever purchased. I got it on Evil Bay. It's been an excellent runner. Great original condition. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to take the shell off of this, and I'll give it a quick lube. And it's really, really very easy. To take the shell off, you just have one, two, three, four screws on the bottom. And this whole bottom chassis will just drop right out. So I'm going to do that now. The only tool you need is just a flathead screwdriver and that's it. So let's start here. And I also always keep my little magnetic dish handy so that I don't lose any of the screws because I hate going on the hands and knees on the carpet to uh, look for them. So I've done this quite a few times on this particular locomotive because I run it so often I love it. It's one of my favorites. It's one of my son's favorites. Actually, they're all my favorites. So simple. With those two. Now these trucks, you just kind of work around it. Just push it out of the way slightly. There we go. Push it out of the way again. Undo this one too. There we go. Four screws out. No problem. The only thing you're going to have that's a little bit tricky, oh, tricky is the rear catch bar. You just got to tilt it forward, slip it out, and there you go. You're free. So put the shell down here. And there she is. That's it. So the only places that I put oil, and everyone's got their own methods or whatever, but I put a little dab of actual oil here, and then on the other side, on I guess which people call the bearing plate, right here, and then the actual gears, I just put a little dab of grease, and I use petroleum jelly for that. So, let me get the grease first, and we'll do that. And get her all back together, and back on the tracks. 2055 is one of my favorites for a lot of reasons. It's a great pulling locomotive. It's a, a pretty popular locomotive, so if you did need parts for it, they're not hard to come by. It's really cool looking. It's just overall it's one of my favorites. Okay, very reliable too. So we just get a little bit of Vaseline or petroleum jelly on the tip of a screwdriver and I just wipe just a little bit. I don't go crazy with it because putting too much grease on it, yeah, it can end up wrecking the electrical contact. I've had many locomotives that I've bought in that were just packed with grease and they ran terribly until I took them apart and cleaned them all up. So just a little bit on the gears like this. I just wipe it on. And that's all I do. Like I said before, everybody's got their own amounts and methods and whatever. It's whatever works for you. That's how I feel about it. So there. That's the wheels greased. And I just give them a spin to get that grease flowing all around them. Now if you want, you can take this plate off as well. So we'll do that now. I'm just going to get the grease off the tip of my screwdriver here.
crack. It shouldn't be this tight. So you don't want to strip the threads on it. Take those out, put them in the magnetic dish. You can take this plate right off and then you expose the gear of the armature. And maybe clean up some of this excess while you got it off here too. I mean, it doesn't hurt. Keeping them all clean. And there we go. Wipe off some of this excess. There we go. So, once again, since this is actually like the main driving gear, it turns the whole thing around. I just give it a little, just a little bit there like that. Spread it around. Perfect. Now just put the plate back on and you, there's lining it up is not a problem. Just put the shaft through the bearing plate the right way. We got it on backwards. There we go. That's the right way. This is the right way. So you got this little rivet here. I think it's a rivet. Maybe it's just a dimple. Anyways, you've got this one here. I don't know if you can see that or the glare is too much. And there's another one over here. And those two line up with the two notches here. There's one on this side and one over on this side. So you drop it over top, see, it just falls into place like that, and then you can put the screws back in. There's one, there's two, get the grease off here, and just tighten them back up. So it seats, maybe give it just a little bit of an extra turn after the screw seats onto the plate. Like that. All right, so that's all back together. Now I'm just going to get my spoil here. Another thing, I just use the regular three in one oil. A lot of people say no, 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 no. It hasn't hurt anything. So I just give a little dab just like that and let it run down, which it will eventually. Again, you can give the wheels a spin to help that circulate through. And since we've got it apart this far, I'm going to take this plate off and have a look at the armature, maybe give it a little wipe down. It doesn't look like it needs it. It looks pretty clean because I think I did this not that long ago on this engine. Again, two more screws. It's all two, two, two with this one. There we go. Now, when I take this off, I tend to like, keep it tight to the body, turn it upside down and then just kind of wiggle it off. And I do that so that the brushes don't come flying out and lose them. So there we go. You can just give them a little tap. Oops, you can see it there. So there we go. We got the brushes out. Put them in the cup. Give this a little wipe it's got a lot of carbon on it a lot of use with this train like so okay what i do for this one is i get myself a little bit of contact cleaner to clean where the brush is actually seat up into so i'm in ontario canada so we got this kind of stuff this was recommended to me by an electrical engineer as a contact cleaner. Again, it's worked well for me. You got your own stuff, you grab what you can with it. It's pretty black in there. Just give it a little bit of a wipe. You don't have to go too crazy. There we go. 
those are clean there's still a lot of resistance on those springs now we look at the armature itself it does have a little bit of uh, carbon on it it's not too bad actually come off with the fingers but I'll show you how you got how I clean these and what I'm gonna get here is I get my little scotch pad that I grab at the dollar store you don't have to go with the 3m brand it's they all do the same thing so I just take this and I just give it a little a little rub here and I don't know if you guys you guys probably couldn't see the black that was on it originally because it was like I said it really wasn't that bad but I give it a little wipe spin it around to the next position give it another wipe clean it right up Shining like a polished copper penny again. Okay. Just like that. And there's nothing in these grooves here that are obstructing it. You can either you can either use like a toothpick or I've got this tiny little awl. It's just enough to get in there and dig out whatever would be in there, but there isn't. So we're good to go. Okay, that's that. Give it a wipe. I do not put any contact cleaner on this part. I don't put anything on the face of this. I just wipe off the carbon and put everything back together. So the brushes, they're in good shape. Just drop them in here, like so. There we go. There's two, like that. And once again, just turn the whole thing upside down so the brushes don't fall out. Poke the shaft right through that center hole there. And boom, goes right back in, lines itself up, and you're good to go. Just put the screws back on, and you're set. There's one, there's two, and with this. In particular, I'd be very careful of how much I'm actually bending it and working it and twisting it because these wires are original. They are still pliable, but not as pliable as they could be, and I don't want to break them because I don't want to re-solder stuff. I just want to do a quick clean and get 2055 back on the tracks. So that's it. All cleaned up, looped, and ready to go. You can drop some oil there we go you can drop some oil on the the axles of the wheels if you want mine are fine i'm not going to worry about it and that's it we're done the one thing you might have to take care of here is the front trucks so this tongue is supposed to be on top of this plate Sometimes while you're working on it, it'll slip underneath and you don't notice it until you go to put the whole thing back together. And usually you don't notice it until you have most of the screws in. So, back on top of this plate, grab the shell, and we hook the trail bar back under that lip. And drop the whole thing back into place. Like so. Make sure the, the lever for the E-unit is sitting where it's supposed to. And there it is. That's back. And we get our screws. So the screws that go at the back here, if you're dealing with an original 2055, they are the larger 
of the the larger set of screws that and again just lightly because you're dealing with white metal here if you over tighten them you will strip it and that's it probably have to use JB weld or something to fix that but don't want to go there so those two back ones are in move up here to the front our truck is in place on top of the plate as it's supposed to be drop in one Tighten it down, second, and that's it, there we go, she's all back together, ready to, all lubricated and ready to run on the tracks. This screw up here, if you're not aware, you take that out and you take the face plate off. So that's all that does, that has nothing to do with removing the body at all. So there's our 2055 lubed back together and ready to go. All right, guys. Thanks for watching this video. On to the next one. Cheers.